chairwoman of the Congressional Black Caucus, Karen Bass, Democrat of California. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, uh, the bill that you and the Congressional Black Caucus has pushed through and that is proposed to the House of Representatives has real penalties for police when they commit a crime. How do you uh, uh, compare the bill that you and uh, the other members of the caucus in the Congress has put together and hopefully will get passed through the Congress, through the House, with the bill that is being proposed in the Senate by Senator Tim Scott and others? Sure. Well, Rev, it's great to join you uh, this Sunday, and happy Father's Day to you. Thank you. Um, I, I will tell you that um, our bill will be voted on on Thursday, and I know that it will pass because we have more than enough votes. But um, the bill that Senator Scott put together mimics our bill in the sense that he takes up certain issues, such as chokehold and no-knock warrants. The problem is, is that he doesn't outright ban them, and we think they need to be banned. I can't think of a reason in the world why you would have a chokehold, and too many people have died of that. And then the no-knock warrant, we have a ban for drug arrests. What uh, Senator Scott is calling for is to collect data on no-knocks and to study uh, chokeholds. We don't think that either one of these things need to be studied or data needs to be gathered. They just need to be banned outright. And what you've seen since we've engaged um, in discussion around this bill and we voted out of committee last week, you've seen a lot of states, you've seen a lot of cities now just outright ban this. And so that is the momentum that the streets are demanding. People want to see substantive change. They do not want to see symbolic change. Now, what we are going to probably then see, if the House passes it Thursday, as you say they will, there will be some negotiations in the Senate around the Scott bill, which does not uh, ban the uh, chokehold and does not ban the no-knock laws. Where is the compromise, in your opinion, where it would go too far. What is something Senator Schumer and the Democrats in the Senate ought not give up in their uh, negotiations with having a bill passed in the Senate? What becomes a deal breaker for you? Well, I, I think what's most important is there needs to be the ability for communities to fire police officers, sue police officers, and prosecute police officers. And our bill addresses those key areas. Now, you know, the other part of the bill, which I think makes it very bold and transformative, is that we are also calling for things that I believe help police and help communities. In other words, we want the standards for policing raised. We want police to be accredited like any other profession. And then in terms of communities and the whole call for looking at whether or not we spend too much money on our budgets on policing versus services, the, our bill provides grants to community-based organizations to re-envision public safety. And that is also one of the cries from the streets. I mean, you know, Rev, you and I have been involved in this issue for decades. And I don't think either one of us can say we have seen the type of momentum that we're seeing on the streets now. There have been protests every single day in cities all across the country. And I think it would be awful for us to move forward with a bill that has no teeth in it. We would be disrespecting the momentum that is out there. And frankly, it's the type of momentum that's out there that we need to sustain for the next 130 plus days until we get to November and we can deal with the real issue, which is a new administration. Now, you would, uh think that in this atmosphere, in this climate, that the president in his first uh, campaign appearance and rally uh, would address these issues in some substantive way. He put an executive order out, which I said was toothless and, and lacked right. any substance. Uh, he met with some uh, family that would not stand with him, family members of people that had died of uh, law enforcement, uh, and uh, he claimed sympathy, but didn't really didn't say anything about, therefore, we ought to deal with police that commits crimes. But he not only didn't deal with the issue at all last night, 
And not only did he not suggest laws, he actually defended Confederate statues. Like Absolutely. we are messing with the heritage of the country to say that we don't want slave owners and those that fought for slave owners to be saluted, extolled, and these statues maintained with black and white and others taxpayer dollars. These statues in front of courthouses and in front of places, uh, legislative halls like uh, the Speaker Pelosi just took some down in the in, in Congress. Yes, we pay for people to maintain these statues. I'm yes. literally paying for somebody to be saluted that advocated me being owned and my great grandparents being owned. Well, you know, I mean, I feel like the fact that he went to Tulsa at all on the 99th anniversary of a massacre, he was right next to where the massacre took place. I view that as an act of aggression against African Americans. He was trying to be provocative. And frankly, most of the time, I'm fine with him not saying anything because anything that he would have said, we know would have been bad. The fact that he's going to defend traitors traitors to the country, people who try to break up the union so that they could keep human beings enslaved, that's who he chose to defend. That's not a dog whistle. That's a bullhorn. And he essentially gathered his own supporters that he also doesn't care about because he made them sign waivers to even be there. He could have done social distancing in that arena because no one showed up. They had plenty of space. They could have spread out. But he also has expressed no concern for the 119,000 Americans that have died in the last three months. I'll leave it there. Strong point. Congresswoman Karen Bass, thank you, Madam Chair Lady, for being with us. Thanks, Joining